I'll go as far as saying if he isn't an NFL player and honestly a top four or five round pick, I'll be very surprised. Hey guys, welcome back to the ANF podcast. This is episode three. Uh, it's gonna have the same format as episode one and episode two, but this time we're gonna be drafting the uh, 2023 recruiting class. We have snake draft. We have our producer Nate here, who's gonna flip a coin to determine who gets a pick first. And the way we're drafting is it's gonna be focused on what we anticipate uh, the recruit to do at Iowa. We anticipate them to be a starter, uh, an all Big Ten player, or possibly a future NFL player. As much as we can at this moment. It's a yeah. difficult thing to do at this stage in the recruiting process because a lot of this is just work on potential. Um, some guys are just going to be axed out right away due to, you know, size and speed, but you mm -hmm. can definitely highlight some guys within this class who you can see comparables, see athleticism strengths, uh, that could lead to eventually an NFL draft pick. And I think we have a couple of them in this class. Yeah. I think there's definitely a few NFL draft picks, you know, excited to break down position groups that Iowa usually develops well consistently. You know, one of the main focuses for us drafting is selecting a recruit that actually falls into one of those categories as well. And we also kind of have a way of categorizing recruits that we anticipate playing quickly and cat uh, recruits that we expect to play at a later date, uh, their junior or senior year. Well, and, and that will also be largely dependent on the strength of the position. So Correct. at receiver, yeah. a guy can necessarily, you know, be a, a guy who plays as a freshman but his odds of ever making the NFL are fairly low. Yeah. Uh, same for O-line. And kind of a preamble to this discussion, I would say our takeaways just from a negative perspective, mm -hmm. uh, receiver and O-line seem to be uh, another rather weak class. Yeah. Um, and then on the flip side, D-line, secondary linebacker seems to be maybe its peak. Yeah, the positions you anticipated I would have recruit well at, they did again. The positions that they've been lacking in, it seems that they've missed again at those positions. And just a, a brief callback to our previous episode. Uh, this is likely going to lead to uh, transfer portal players coming to Iowa late in the stage, you know, being at a larger program for two or three years and then transferring back to Iowa. And uh, just how this class is built out, we anticipate that to be a hallmark of Iowa football going forward is we're mm. going to have this well-developed, uh, strong depth from the defense, but then have, uh, a rather thin offensive group that needs to be reinforced from uh, outside the team. Yep. So let's get to it. Nate, you want to flip the coin for us? And I would love to. I'll call again. I'll, I'll do tails. Yeah. Heads this time. Ooh. All right, perfect. I'm way. glad. <laughs> so snake draft, so I just get one. Yep. Uh, I think I would, ex if, especially if you look at the recruiting rankings, this is kind of a, a product of what we've seen from how uh, recruiting evaluators have evaluated in-state talent from Iowa. Iowa in-state talent is actually exceptional. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the reason that we've seen Iowa stay in the top 25 for the better part of the last 25 years. It's because since the 2015 season, we've seen really exceptional players come out of Iowa, not only at the high end level, you can, you know, you can call back worse and Linderbaum and uh, even Brandon Sheriff, but mm -hmm. the interior players, guys like, uh, you know, he's a much maligned guy, but Bo Bauer, we played against him in high school, is super talented guy, played three years, uh, Josie Jewell, um, mm -hmm. but just tons of in-state talent. And a lot of them aren't recognized as guys who are going to excel at the D1 level, uh, but because they play at a small school, um, they aren't heavily recruited, and that's led to Iowa Bill and the pull some guys late in the recruiting process that end up being pretty good players for them. So uh, without further ado, I will take uh, Zach Lutmer. And... Uh, I just got done watching his, I've watched his film from his junior year film. Once he committed, I believe he committed as a senior this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once his senior year film came out, it's, it is comparable to what we saw from Cooper DeGene's film as a senior. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he has the top end speed that Cooper does, but it's very close. And I know that he, when he ran at Iowa's camp last summer, he ran in the four fives. I think he actually ran wow. the fastest 40 there. So uh, for a guy his size and then, you mix in, uh, we've mentioned this before with guys, but zero fear. Mm -hmm. Puts his face through guys. First play on his tile tape is his, him putting his face through a, a, a player. Mm -hmm. um, shows great lateral ability. Yeah. Shows great turn in the corner ability. Just overall, like, you just, it's it's so insane that he's ranked as a low three star. Yeah, and I think, actually, you bring up his speed at the Iowa camp was my one concern was his top end speed. Because you kind of had that comparison of Cooper DeGene, that same type of athlete, same type of build, mm -hmm. explosiveness. And honestly, most people would be playing on offense. Yeah. I think we both project him to be a 
strong safety. I think he could play the cash. Yeah. yeah. I think anywhere in that, you know, portion of the field. Yeah, free safety, strong safety, cash, that little triangle he could definitely play in. Yeah. And I'll go as far as saying if he isn't an NFL player and honestly a top four or five round pick, I'll be very surprised. Like he yeah. is that talented. You just it's it's interesting when you see these guys because he's playing one A football, but the talent just is so apparent mm -hmm. that you don't understand why the recruiting evaluators haven't caught on to this yet. Like yeah. the guy is just uber talented. Well, he's ranked as a actually I have the recruiting numbers up because I you watch a senior film and it's rare that you watch twenty straight plays and he performs exactly how you want him to perform in every play. Yeah, you don't you have keep a on waiting for that letdown play that that not mediocre play on the film, but every single rep he has, it's exactly how you want him to play it. Yeah. He finishes with the physicality. He's yeah. got the speed. He's got the lateral ability. Then yeah. you throw on his basketball highlights. You can hammer. Like, the there's no way he should be ranked. A he's the 112th athlete in the country. He's rated uh, 12, 23 as a, any football player in the country. I, I, as you said, you expect me NFL. I will never watch another Iowa football game or attend one. If he's that ranking, yeah, at, at the end of his career, he's twelve twenty three in this class. There's yeah. just no way that he should be ranked that high. And like you mentioned, it becomes it comes from him being in Iowa. Yeah, small school in Iowa that whoever does the evaluations has not put the time in. Six foot one, six foot one one ninety kid. Yep, it's plays kind of at a small school. You, you you can't. I mean, I understand the thought process, right? But it's also just not being embedded in what Iowa football actually is. Like right. Iowa high school football is high end talent, mm -hmm. and they pull guys out of those lower tier schools all the time that can play at the Big Ten level, right? And it's just not anticipated from those other groups. Yeah, no, I completely agree, and I think, I think strong safety. I think the comparison for him that jumps to mind is Tyler Sash, Geno Stone. Geno Stone has the same alley runs that Geno has, where yeah. you see him come off. C gap in between the receiver pushing it down and he runs that alley so well. And then he finishes just like Gio yeah. does, just like Sash does. And actually another guy from the kind of the same area, I think Brandon Snyder was yeah. maybe even a rival high school yeah. of where, uh, Lummer went. Yeah. But I think if we got to see Snyder at his full peak at Iowa, I yeah. think that's what we can anticipate from Lutmer and even Amani hooker too. I think the kind of same build. Yeah. Basically every good safety yeah. that we've ever had at Iowa. That's him. You when you watch Lutmer, Lutmer's film, you can project that onto his film very easily. Yeah, and also being a quarterback, just the knowledge that gives you, Iowa loves to recruit quarterbacks for defensive positions because yep. you have to understand the entire game, and having that kind of you know experience really gives you a a valuable head start. A lot of other people coming in. Certainly. Um, so I think it's up to me now for yep. pick two. We are happy to announce a new sponsor for the ANF podcast. The ANF podcast is sponsored by Eye Surgeons Associates, proudly serving Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois for all your eye care needs for over 40 years. I'll do a uh, Ben Cater. I think before you watch Lemmer's film again, you He's were one. anticipating to take him number one. Yeah. Um, and we, we uh, if you are following along with us, pull up these players highlights films on Huddle. Uh, for Cater, it is his best plays highlight that yeah. I'm about to reference. I love he, you can tell he did all of his, his, uh, titles for it. Cause it's just like good place. Yeah. <laughs> other and, place. Other <laughs> place. Yeah. And, uh, but pull up his best plays. It's about, I think a three minute video, maybe a four minute video. Yeah. Maybe even shorter than that, but his first highlight of that, he shoots through the line, shows good acceleration, good speed. He barely gets around the running back's waist. He kind of gets him. He's on the backside of him. He kind of gets his arms around him. him. Right. And then he power bombs him. Yeah. Like suplexes him. At full speed, he regains his base and then has the strength and the athleticism to then suplex a guy simultaneously. Yeah. Grabs him, then suplexes him right away. And it just shows his wrestling background. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. That is the number one wrestler. At his weight class at, in the world. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. For sure in the country. Yeah. And it... That's how it gets played out in football. Yeah. And it was the first time I've ever seen that play in high school football where I'm like, wow, I, that's that's like Josie and Campbell being your floor. Yeah. And it's crazy to say that because like those are probably our two favorite linebackers from the previous 20 years. Yeah. But if Cater doesn't play to that level, it would be surprising. Yeah. He's got the physical tools to do it and the wrestling background mixed with his physicality and speed. 
if he doesn't make the NFL, it'd be more shocking than not. Well, I remember when his, his junior year of film was out after he uh, committed to Iowa and he was still listed as a three-star prospect on right. rivals. He's now, I think, a four-star in almost all of them now, I think, in a top 100 player in one of them. Uh, but it was just so frustrating. It's like, what like what are you not seeing in this guy? He's mm-hmm. 6'3", 6'4", runs like a deer, and then finishes with about as much violence as you can possibly ask for. Right. I think what – going back and rewatching him, I he does show just – it's the only critiques you can make. He shows, you know, how Campbell used to just run through a dude mm-hmm. in high school, high school film. And the first time we saw Campbell's film, it was just him annihilating guys. Having yeah. like, he had a couple of those plays, but he would definitely go for the gator roll or right. the suplex more. And he would just go more for, of a wrestler than more, Campbell's a basketball player. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, but then what really surprised me is how fluid he looked with the ball. In with the ball. And that's such a, like an underrated thing about linebacker plays guys who can, move with like fluidity through blockers trying to mm-hmm. hit lanes that is like if you could describe why linebacker is good yes you have speed and strength but like that that awareness that he has right. is cerebral and it's going to really play out he's going to have to sit for a bit because you just he's not going to play as a true freshman likely yeah uh, I, I do think we'll see him pretty quickly though yeah I, I could see him in garbage time this year i think yeah i think what we've seen for iowa how they like to handle their recruits generally is there's two buckets for him. There's the initial bucket of you're going to play as a true freshman or a redshirt freshman, or you're going to be in the two deeps at that age. And that is a big signifier if you're NFL or not. Yeah. That's kind of where we look at, you know, if we see someone pop up early, yeah. get time early, you and I both go. They'll anoint you. That's that's NFL. Yeah. That's what that means. Because they, when they run you through all the position drills, they put you through all the plays, you are that higher of a tier to your peers that they cannot convince themselves to put someone over you. Yeah. And they're going to deal with your growing pains for six games, four games, because that they just want to get that experience into you because they want you playing at an all big 10 level by your red shirt sophomore year, because that's your last year at Iowa. Yeah. And if you do get annoyed, they've done a better job of recognizing that too. They have, we have to, with that three year plan for a lot of guys. Now they're, Right. They're willing to stick him out in the field earlier just because it's like, okay, we have to get some use out of this guy before he's gone. Right. And you think about all the early draft picks we've had the last few years. Worfs. Well, even guys who left early. Right. Amani, Gino. Well, Gino they, played as a true freshman against Nebraska and played right. incredible. But it's all those guys. Like, you saw Campbell early. You saw Laporta early. You saw Van Ness early. Yeah. And going back to recruiting rankings, we're talking very highly of Cater and Lutmer. Yeah. Even though they are three stars and low four stars. Campbell, Laporta, and... Van Ness were all three stars. Low. Campbell was, Campbell was a little higher. He was on the start of the four stars, but Van Ness was low. Well, Van Ness, Van Ness was a 5'5 five five on Rivals. Right. And Laporta wouldn't have been a three star unless he was offered by Iowa. He right. He's going to Eastern Michigan. So we have a, we're giving Lutmer and Cater a lot of respect and, you know, excitement and kind of hyping them up. But this happens all the time in Iowa. Yeah. Iowa signs a 5'6, three star, and they turn out to be a first round NFL talent. Because Iowa is not just a developmental program. They spot yeah. really well. They can project very well. They, 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 I, I believe what they do best is mentality. Mm-hmm. They know what guy is playing with complete lack of self-preservation. Right. That's what I saw with Lutman right away. Like, this guy's the starting quarterback on a team that won a state title. Mm-hmm. And you could have convinced me he was, like, a guy who only played defense. Yeah. And you see that, it's like, well, shit. Like, yeah, you don't even think about that. He's a quarterback. Quarterback. He's hating like And they, that. like... Coaches like to preserve their quarterbacks. I imagine there's a couple of times I'm filming like, hey, just take him down. Don't <laughs> yeah. put your face to the guy. Yeah, maybe don't put your head down there. But I'm sure like also these guys, when they're going through the recruiting process, like this is what I wants to see. Right. They want to see you, you know, lay some dude out. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he exhibited all of it right away. I, it's it's up there with the Jeans film. I I, I, I guess I'm not going back to Lubner, but uh, same with Cater, though. It's like, yeah, it's the same thing. Just crazy energy. Yeah. And just he plays how you want to play it. Always giving effort. Yeah. There's there's the effort plays you want to show in film. The one where you're you're out of the play, but you keep going hard and you you finish the play. And then there's the pure athleticism parts of your film where you just shoot through and you annihilate somebody. And he has both. Yeah. And then he's got the offensive side where you're like, oh, he still has true speed too. That's a four six, four seven type stride. Yeah. Um and they Campbell showed that's four seven is fast first round enough. Exactly. Just wild. Yeah. Um, kind of the same line of what I anticipate for this guy. I anticipate NFL. I anticipate 
he's on that first bucket where you're playing as a retro freshman. You're not that long-term play. You're not that pipeline play. You're playing as a retro sophomore and above, generally mm-hmm. not NFL then. This guy's, I think, as a retro freshman, I think he'll start at guard or center. I'm going to go with Leighton Jones. We talked in the previous episodes about the perfect mold for a tight end. You know, you want this athletic basketball player, uh, you know, generally above 6'5", and just, you know, great athlete. He is our mold for center. Mm -hmm. He was a nationally ranked uh, wrestler uh, in his high school career. I don't remember if he won state his senior year. He had some insane record. I remember he had less than five losses. Yeah. Um, When you watch him play, he plays through his hips the entire time, Mm -hmm. which is if you're going to play interior line in our Iowa zone scheme, you better be leveraged. Yeah. You better be playing through your hips. He doesn't have the... I'm a giant offensive lineman place yeah. where I just shove you to the ground. I'm 300 pounds. So let me just put all my weight in my shoulders and right. pancake just shove 10 you. guys. Yeah. He has the, he's sticky. Yeah. I think that's what you, when you consistently watch Iowa high school recruits, that are going to pan out of Iowa. Are they sticky? Do they have leverage? Do they wrestle? Yeah. And are they appropriate build? Like Lane's going to put on 15 pounds and he'll be ready to go. Well, he just, the thing I took away from him was controlled violence. Yeah. He, he's certainly an aggressive guy. I don't think he's got that, that nasty side that Linderbaum had, you know, you can watch that. I think every wrestler does a little bit. Oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure he's capable of it. I think he's, I think he's more hinged than Linderbaum is what right. I'm trying to say. I don't think there's times where you'll see him like start to drive a guy and he won't go for the plan. Yeah, I saw that too, which and is it, good. I, which is, I, 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 I said you're going to eliminate 15 yard penalties and stuff like that. Yeah. But he, like, I think having the, the capacity for it, he certainly has it in him. Cause you'll see him explode occasionally. Mm-hmm. It's like all of a sudden some guy will jump by him and he'll just, you know, blow through the dude. He had a couple double kills on those, those, double teams up to the line second line yeah uh but what i loved about him is he never played over his toes he Ever. was always just completely balanced would drive proportionally what he could what we should right. be up, where he could stay upright and not stumble or fall that is the key of any lineman you watch at iowa if he plays over his toes and he's a shover he yeah. plays through his shoulders it's the last thing you want at iowa yeah we're moving more of a power scheme it's becoming more of our game so it might be more of our offense but generally why if linemen play early in their career is they play balanced mm-hmm. they play through their hips they don't play over their toes they're not leaning yeah and i think that's what you see in Leighton the entire well, time center, you're always going to need that and just so we said lutmer and cater nfl i once again i'd be shocked if Leighton doesn't have a very good shot at the nfl if not a top three round draft pick and it's would be on brand it's you know iowa consistently if you're an iowa recruiting class you probably got three guys that are going to the nfl and they're going to go high yeah that's kind of where i was at now especially for linebacker, safety, and center. center. Yeah. That's what we do well. We got the perfect bodies for them. They're easy comps for current players, and they have the great athletic mold of what Iowa wants as well, Certainly. and the mindset. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go next. next one. I'll say uh, Aiden Hall. Yep. He's I'm, actually uh, – I think when he was a senior last year, I don't think he was offered till the fall of his senior year, and – he was a guy that was kind of waiting on the offer mm-hmm. and people were looking around like, what, what are they waiting for? This guy, you know, is probably the top athlete, if not the top athlete within right. Iowa, when it comes to speed and strength, mm-hmm. uh, he finally got it. And, uh, I believe they're, they're going to play my, uh, linebacker and he fits really well into that weak side linebacker role. Yeah. Uh, and if you watch his film, it's just him being the fastest guy in the field over and over again. Yeah. It's all, and, this is just it, breaking angles. We talked about this earlier, but, he is a step slow from playing running back at Iowa. Yeah. Like, and might, and, and you might make the argument he should play running back mm-hmm. at Iowa, which is fantastic for a linebacker. Right. Because one day you're going to be able to put him and Cater on the field. Cater's going to be the guy you let run free, and Aiden can cover everything outside of the left tackle on that weak side because yeah. he's going to play that weak side linebacker spot. And that's just so, it's so well developed for a speed guy. Mm hmm. And especially how college ball is moving, everyone's right. going spread. Everyone's going to that power shotgun. So you think about all the space that weak side linebackers to cover. He is that new mold, mm-hmm. and he could play safety very easily on the Iowa team. He ha- obviously has the speed. He runs like a 10, 8, yeah. 6, 100, one of the fastest guys in the state. Uh, but the fact that they believe in him enough to play linebacker is huge. Yeah, because you just we don't have that kind of speed at, at linebacker very often. And there really isn't a comp for him. No. And I, I think that's what you look through Lutmer, Cater, and um, Jones. Jones, those are easy comps. Yeah. This is the first time where I was like, all right, he can play 
receiver for us. He could play running back for us. He could play linebacker, he could play safety. But I couldn't put my finger on who he reminds me of. Because he's such an original build for Iowa to recruit. Yeah. Because generally we recruit a 6'2 guy. And we think about, he's going to translate to linebacker. He doesn't have that last gear. No. And you watch other guys. You watch even cater to it. You know, you go, back, go back, you go back to like a, a Christian Welch, like Christian right. Welch, Welch ran really well for an Iowa linebacker. Yeah, I think he ran the fastest 40 at when he was at camp for Iowa. Mm-hmm. But that's who we typically have or a Seth Benson, like ran well. Right. But they're just they weren't the deers that you see like a Georgia throw. It actually there. might be Neiman. Yeah. The Neiman brothers. Yeah. Just because of the overall just speed and athleticism. But he's even got a step on them. I believe. 100 percent. Maybe not. Ben, uh, I guess I think Nick ran it faster. Yeah, but I think Ben was the faster football player of the two. Yeah, Ben was better at powering down and making tackles, but Nick yeah. might have been faster. Yeah, yeah. But, but still, yeah, it's yeah. just a really interesting prospect, and I don't know like who to cop him to. And but there's no way he's not going to be a great football player for us. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, and it, it again, like it's just exciting to it, we're, the way we're building out this new defense. You get a guy like him at weak side. Mm-hmm. He's one of the a, he's a generational talent within Iowa, yeah. and you get to play him at weak side linebacker. Yeah. That's a gift. Like yeah. the fact that you're not forced to play him at running back or forced to play him at receiver. Yeah, even safety. It's like you can stick that speed there. Mm-hmm. That's that's a real plus. I, kind of a random call out, but Harlan, the high school. Do you watch most of that film? Oh yeah, that was a-, a hell of a program. Yeah, like I you're watching certain plays that they're running and the way it hits. Yeah. And just the way they're coached up. We'll route out of the backfield yeah. to them. And their first like power scheme they ran with pulling guard tackle. Yeah. It hit seamlessly. Like Iowa doesn't run it that well. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, all right, so this is that's why you win two state titles. Is yeah. you have a real coach team, then you got Aiden Hall and probably a few other dogs. But yeah. that was kind of just a random point I watched. I was like, this is the first time I've watched high school film where I'm like, this is this reminds me of like D three football. Yeah. Type yeah. of like execution. High, high end. Yeah. Well, I, I think I got one more here. Uh I'll this where it gets tough. I feel yeah. Like. There's there's a lot of guys you can take here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go with Cleel Tate, and Ooh. it's there's a couple of reasons for this. I think number one, cornerback is just really thin right now. Mm-hmm. It really isn't. I think he could be one of those guys who gets anointed by the end of the year just by just being the best of the bunch. You know, mm-hmm. he's gonna have to compete uh, compete against Jamison Hines for that that third that third uh, cornerback spot, or mm-hmm. I guess it'd be it'd be the fifth. Yeah, but he's gonna have to compete for against Jamison Hines for that spot and. We've seen in, I don't know how many years in a row, we've mentioned this in the last podcast, but you're always going to have one, maybe even two cornerback injuries where they have to sit down just because mm-hmm. it's a position where you can't be slightly nicked. You have to be full go. Yeah. And I don't know if there's another guy I see in the wings, maybe Brendan. I, I think he's been kind of like hovering around where if he could stay healthy, he could jump ahead of Khalil. Mm-hmm. But uh, Khalil that had seems too time. long of a play in my head. Yeah. Like, I feel like it would have happened earlier. It would have happened now. Yeah. yeah. So... Cleo had offers from Wisconsin. I think he had even some, maybe Notre Dame even, or he had some sniffing from Notre Dame. Yeah, he had a lot of big time offers. I think when we got him, I was like, oh. But then I watched his film, and there's some. Oh, see, that's why I like about that. Right. Since you, I, it's it's a lot. There's a t- so many corners you can go back to where, I'll, even Jamari Harris. Granted, Jamari Harris's film, he just looked like a natural corner. Right. But he wanted. He was a two star recruit. Yeah. And Cleo Tate, I watched. What I like about him is he's got that shut down tackle ability yeah. where the minute the guy gets close to him, the guy just evaporates and I it's think over his comp for corner. If you're going to project him there. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. It's that's it. You're playing up essentially a, a guy should be in the slot or at safety at corner. Yeah. Just to eliminate any extra yardage. Yeah. But then you can just play Iowa football where you back up a little bit, right? You play everything in front. He's going to tackle better. He's going to be physical and run support. Mm-hmm. And I think we're underrating his speed. I don't. It's something about how he runs. He's just awkward. He's just an awkward mover. Yeah. So it, you want to immediately attribute him to not be this like, world beater talent. Mm-hmm. But I think we're going to see him translate fine. I yeah. don't. I especially if you're playing at corner, it means Phil will not pick a guy at corner unless he can really run. Right. That's so. That's what we've seen. You know, it's not going to be some exceptional forty, probably in the four or five range. But mm-hmm. by the time he's out. But I think I'm playing more just that the offers, off, the offers, and I think you have to because this film doesn't. I I was you keep on waiting for the play. Yeah, and you get that Wisconsin offer on defense, especially in the secondary. Yeah, like oh, this guy's gonna be a stud. And I, my only hesitation is it, it reminds me so much of the Dallas Cradith recruitment, where you kind of land this big four star later in the process. Yeah, he had freaking thirty offers, but then you turn on the film 
And you're kind of like, you're waiting for that play. You're waiting for that moment. You're like, there it is. That's why it's a four star. That's yeah. why it's a high three star. And I'm kind of getting that vibe of like, was this kid just super developed at a young age? And then, you know, got those offers to roll in. And I just, now on film, I just don't see it. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. And if he played well, it would not surprise me at all. Yeah. But I'm not seeing that, like, I'm drafting him fifth. Yeah. I, 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 I think, again, going back, it's just because of the thin, how thin that position is. Yeah. And if we're going off of, okay, who's going to play the earliest and have an impact? And if you're projecting to the NFL, cornerback is the guy to grab. Yeah. And like, that's again, like, I don't. He tackles so well at that speed size. I just I imagine that they project like Phil knows he's fast enough. Right. So I'm going to trust him there. And then yep. if, he, if I see enough in the tackling department, okay, we mm -hmm. got something to work with. He does evaporate people. Yeah. Like there's just no extra. Just puts his puts his face right through knees the entire time. It's yep. like, all right, that's a football player. Yeah. All right. I think I'm up. I'm going to go with Kenneth Merriweather. So this guy is, he doesn't have a senior film on Huddle, but his junior film looks like a senior film. He doesn't fit like the general mold for an Iowa D end. I'd say he fits more to the Joe Evans, Parker Hesse, little Nate Ethan, Meyer, Ethan Herkett, maybe even a little maybe, bit. Yeah, like that six three, six, three six two and a half type guy. Yeah, uh, and there he's two thirty. He's not two thirty right now. No, actually, because like couldn't find anything on him. I went to his Twitter page. And there's a photo next to him with Kevin Bell. He looks like a pretty slight guy. Yeah, he's a slight dude. And his actually one film I could see from his senior year is he's playing receiver. And he runs this like post route. He goes, he lines up probably like two yards off the tight end on the right side, runs his like hesitation post route over the middle. And it looks like a D1 receiver. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's our D end. Yeah. And then I'm, right away, I'm like, oh, Deontay Craig. Yeah. That's the comp. Yeah. It's the guy we haven't watched play out yet. I wanted to say Chauncey just because we're from the same area. Yeah. But the technique he shows in his junior film as a junior and the violence he shows every time he hits the QB yeah. just decimates him it just like the guy is just being thrown like, yeah yeah if we're gonna build him at probably i'd say 258 yeah he'll be a 250 guy 256 type guy that gives me some hesitation because we we generally don't put the 256 guy in the league yeah that's the guy we we turn into a good you know honorable mention second team all big time players senior year joe evans right but not the epineza not the venice not the anthony nelson so that's why I didn't draft him higher, but from everything I've seen, this guy's going to play at an incredible level in college football. He might, he probably should maybe go to another school. Yeah, because he's not going to fit our. Kind of like a Justin team. Jacobs, right? Yeah, where you have just like if when you play for a three four team and you're a stand up DN, yeah, they're going to use you in probably more you know a better way consistently. Yeah, we do use that stand up DN, but it's not an every down player for us. No. And unless you can play super physical, we're, asking, we're asking you to lock out against tackles a lot consistently. That, yeah, yep. consistently. And we're not letting you. We're not letting you go inside outside, which a lot of those three, four linebackers right. do. We want you locking out. We you have to go battle the tackle. You're not yeah. going to run around him. Well, and I don't think we can, you know, necessarily project him as not an NFL player because I, he's such an athlete, right? And he's just so physical at the point of attack that yeah. it's definitely possible he could be a, a three, four outside linebacker one day. But and, again, it just doesn't make sense why he's within this scheme. Yeah. And, and I'm I, sure I will gladly take him. They're like, oh, hell, we'll take this guy. Exactly. We know he doesn't fit perfectly, but yeah. we can teach him how to play that spot. With right. Him. And that's, I actually, when I first watched him, I said NFL. Yeah. This is NFL type film. But then I thought, who is the comp and how does that play out in our system? And then I'm like, that's when my hesitation comes. It's just purely like being in Iowa. Yeah. I think if he's at other programs, he might. At Wisconsin or something like that. Right. You stand up position where you have just a little more. Even in Michigan, where they let you. It's a more inside outside perfect. move type yeah. of team. Yep, even like the stand up at Illinois, like yeah, that's your more of a standard DN spot for him. Yeah, definitely. Am I up again? Yep. All right, this is where it gets tricky, and I think we're actually start disagreeing here soon. Um, I'm gonna go actually, John Nestor. I, I like John a lot. Yeah, I think he plays post snap like a, a college corner. Yeah, and I think my cop for him instantly is Jamari Harris. Yeah, because you go back and watch Jamari play at cornerback. Well, he's gonna he's not gonna play corner at Iowa. He could the no, way he, he he ran a four seven at Iowa's campus. Oh, summer. okay, so he's a safety. He's a safety. But the same way that Jamari's film jumped off the tape to me was because he played corner like a college cornerback. Yeah, the way he pedaled, the way he flipped his hips, the way he broke, it looked like someone who's been repping corner drills for a long time. Yeah, it looked like how Iowa wants that corners to play already. Yeah. Nestor plays like a secondary player, not a cornerback, but he also has cornerback tendencies that 
jump out to you right away. He's the most, he's got the best instincts right. and the best reaction. He's just, you could tell the guy's played football in the backyard since he's been five every single day. Yeah. He never flinches on any move. It's no. it just immediate reaction, runs alleys. Right. And then once he gets the ball, just absolutely demolishes guys. And he's not the biggest guy. No. I think, and he said he's not the fast guy. But he does. He, I, he, I, won't, I won't discredit him. Like, I think he's got football speed. You'll see him yeah. occasionally when I, I like watching offense talent. To, I mean, offense tape to see how fast guys. Yep, yep. He ran a couple of wheels with him where he kind of opens it up. You could see him like get behind a guy. But it's just, I don't think it's, I mean, with that 4-7 time, granted, we don't know how he's running that day, if he could get faster in college, if he could eventually s- uh, switch to corner. But mm-hmm. uh, when you just talk about a football player that you want on your team, oh, yeah. this is why I was good, because in a pinch, say this guy never starts it down, because he's going to have some competition at safety over mm-hmm. the next couple of years. Uh, if you had to go to him as a, a too deep, you strong safety, good. you'd be like, this guy is going to play perfect. Yeah, I think a, a good comp for him is Jack Corner. Yeah. Like a guy who played DB in high school, mm-hmm. not the fastest guy on the team, but just always in the right spot and yeah. then just eliminates guys when he gets there. Well, I remember watching his film and twice they put him in cover two, kind of like a Tampa two look. Mm-hmm. And they run a seam on him down the sideline with the tight end in his inside eye. Yeah. So he's supposed to get pulled inside. At best, he's supposed to make the play on the receiver and bat it away. That's yeah. the goal. Yeah. The first time they throw it against him, it's two different teams. They run it two different times. The first team that runs against him, he flips his hips, stacks the receiver who's on the outside seam, and then intercepts it. And that's versus a seam pass against cover two with three guys going deep. That should be, at best, a deflection. Yeah. And that was my first time. I'm like, well, that's the play that should beat it. Yeah. And he's, he's not ca- only he's, makes he's calculated it so fast. Right. And he smells it right away. He's like, oh, I know what they're trying to beat me with. Yeah. And then he has another one where... You can tell he's like, so they does that twice where he actually has two interceptions against, well, he's in cover two against a three seam look yeah. against him. It's like a simple high school play. Did you see the post with the wheel behind it that he, he, yeah. he passes off the post and fits the wheel? Yeah. I've seen the RD1 safety, starting safety get beat by that move. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, so he's just immediately processing how he needs to. And there's another one where he is in the cover three. You can tell he gets dropped down into a middle zone and he doesn't just stand there. Like that's kind of that classic high school. Oh, I'm in my zone. I'm just guarding nobody. Yeah. I'm guarding space. There's a drag that's like three yards downfield and shallow, and he just beelines, beelines it. it towards yeah. it and hits him as the guy catches the ball. It's like incomplete pass. Those that's yeah. Dane Belton type stuff. Where yeah, he, Belton always kind of sensed of where the the route tree was coming from, understanding like what route concepts to attack and what your true assignment is within the zone, and that's what Nestor does so well. You always he always understands his assignment of what he has to do within the zone, which is not it's for high school. Very rare. And that's a very translatable skill for Iowa because you need that quick decision making. That is the essence of the Iowa defense. Yeah. I think uh, a a comp for just last year's team is Merriweather. I I don't think Merriweather ran a super fast 40, Mm -hmm. but he was always in the right spot. And when he got there, the guy was done. Yeah. And I'm always like, I'm tempted to never really judge speed from a high school film because it's all, it's, you know, it's based on how far the camera's out, how fast the players you're playing against. He's playing high level Chicago football. Right. You don't know if he's just one of the guys and that's okay at that Mm -hmm. level. Uh, So I think he could fit in in that cash role just because he Mm -hmm. is such an eliminator within the run game. Where it's like you're essentially throwing a third linebacker out there. I like, I got halfway through this film, like, this guy could play linebacker if he wanted to. he's, He's a decently big guy. But they yeah. could eventually grow him into a weak side linebacker just because of how well he tackles and how physical he is. Mm-hmm. And he he's just a football player. We'll yeah. say it again. He's just the guy just knows his assignment, reads stuff fast, isn't right. afraid to guess, which is important within those positions. 100%. And then just finishes plays. Yeah, trust your eyes. That's number one Iowa rule. Yeah. And honestly, like Rex Roth is the same type of guy, like from a few cl- classes back. And just Iowa players as a whole, it's like, I would, would rather recruit football players and figure it out after the fact than have to like project exactly where to find them. Yeah. I think Nestor kind of falls into that role where like he does everything you want as a football player. Just well, bring when, you're, squad when and, you're playing zone defense, speed isn't you're not chasing guys all over the field. Right. Your your idea is to be more intelligent team who can mm-hmm. read and react. And then when it comes time, like doesn't have any fear. Yeah. Like we're, you're going to have to sometimes put your face through someone's knee yeah. through their hip. And that's what they identify as guys who have that no self-preservation attitude. And mm-hmm. he's definitely one of them. Yeah. All right. I think you're up. 
So I'll go with uh, Terrell Washington Jr. Ooh. And this is, again, along the same line as uh, Khalil Tate. And it's just because the position at running back is thin. Yeah. And you're looking at, you know, Caleb Johnson is the obvious bell cow, but you're not going to want to play him. You're not going to want to give him 20 carries a game in the non-con. Mm-hmm. Uh, LaShawn Williams, we've kind of seen his uh, his ceiling, you know. Yeah. He just lacks speed. He's overly physical guy, like moves pretty well laterally. But there's times where you'll see a hole open and he's running to it and it closes before he gets there because he just has that speed to get there. Yeah. And uh, he's not a long term option there. And then you have Patterson, who has had some moments. Uh, it's tough to project him as like a heir apparent to Caleb one day and say, OK, for sure, you're going to play. So with Terrell, we've seen just his film. I was watching it when, I, when we originally pulled away from Purdue or not pulling away because once they had Purdue had a regime regime change, we entered back, back into the recruiting firm. Mm-hmm. I watched it as a receiver film. I was like, oh shit, here we go again. It's yeah. going to be another Tyrone Tracy where we're trying to undersized guy without having the top end speed. Well, he just, he doesn't, didn't look polished in the receiver game. He looked mm-hmm. like the fastest guy in the field. So we throw you the ball. Yeah. And then once I went back uh, today and watched him as running back tape, because that's where we saw him playing in the spring, mm-hmm. he had just a couple really subtle qualities that that I thought he'd be a great third down receiving back right. handoff out of shotgun guy. He's got really good. I mean, we saw it in the spring game. He can, he, if he gets even with you, he can make you miss in a, in a really small area yep. and get extra yards, which is going to be important for a guy who's smaller. And yep. then he's got top end speed. I don't think he's got the Goodson burst. Goodson, when we watched that, uh, that Georgia tape, it mm-hmm. was like, wow, that's a lot different from what we've ever seen. Yeah, that full NOS. <laughs> but he's going to be close. He's mm-hmm. going to be a guy who, when he's on a uh, uh, college field, is one of the faster guys. Mm-hmm. So we can exploit that in ways. And I don't think there's really a dude within that running back room who is faster than him at the moment. Maybe Caleb at top end speed. I'm sure yeah. Caleb's probably pretty close. He's, Caleb's going to be an NFL back one day. Mm-hmm. But uh, Terrell is probably that second fastest guy in that room. And he's good in small spaces. So yeah. when you look at what the, the the room needs is a kind of a scatty third down back. Mm-hmm. And taking hits off the other guys are probably probably gonna be pretty willing to give him the ball yeah i think re-watching his film as a a running back definitely helps a lot mm-hmm. and i think i always have a hesitation towards texas players yeah i think especially texas athletes uh they're not cross-trained through basketball and wrestling like other football players they play, football. That, they play football and that you can see in their movements kind of yeah and it's they have year-round football and they don't get that lateral you know and I think with him as well, his top end speed never really jumped out to me. So when he we recruit him as a receiver, I think you have to take into account though that he is playing at the highest level of Texas football. Right. You see those guys that are chasing; they're not big guys, but they're all fast, fast, and he's yeah. running away from them. Yeah. So that just cook in that say, yeah. okay, he's probably got a touch higher than uh, above average speed. Yeah. Like he's just going to be a, a touch faster yeah. for the Big Ten West. That's mm-hmm. probably getting the job done. Yeah. I, I don't think he's at running run. back too. I think that was my big, I, if he's at, now he's at running back, that gives me a lot more. Yeah. I don't know. Belief. Confidence in him. Yeah. Rather than being a receiver. And it's like, all right. Yeah. I, I, I know there's six foot receiver. That's not, I, know, I was like, ah, we did it again. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, uh, we can talk about that a little bit later, but uh, the receiver room again, I just going back and watch the films. It's like, ah, oh, man, we're just doing it again. Yeah. We're playing, I, we're playing pretend. Obviously we're not, we're not going to draft either of them, Yeah, but it just feels like, yeah, these guys could start. Yeah, but that's not saying anything. Yeah, start at Iowa. Yeah. But you are you just never see that play play. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, this guy's different. Like this when is- you watch Caleb Brown's film, you're like, okay, well, that's uh, yeah, most athletic guy I've ever seen. And that's what skill is in the Big Ten. Yeah. You need those holy you shit can't, plays. You can't, you can't like read into the film. Right. You can't like go in like, well, he's... he's good anticipation he's, here. Yeah, yeah. He's, he got good hands. Yeah. It's like, no, you you need a guy who's just different than everyone. Right. By a long, large margin. Consistently faster. Yeah. Like, that is, that's the key of devising offenses. Yeah. Like, have can, the faster guy. Yeah. Do you feel like he's going to win every time? Yeah. All right. That's a play. Yeah. Like... Because that, that makes into then how a team calls against you, too. Yeah. How they're going to... If they're going to press you, if they're going to do a bunch of stuff to you. Yeah. Can't be throwing out guys who can't run. Yeah. Uh, my next one would be uh, Tegan Davis. And I think yeah. I love Tegan Davis. Yeah. I, late is a typical late Phil Parker offer. Mm-hmm. Completely fell underneath the radar. It's another small, small school in Illinois. Yeah. Like just played quarterback. Yeah. Uh, didn't have the same physicality that Nestor or Lutmer had. Yeah. But has that just weird, just lateral ability Wait, where well. a guy just can't, they can't touch him. Mm-hmm. And you, 
They, I, I think they maybe project him at corner. I mm-hmm. don't think he's going to run well enough to play at corner. But I, yeah, but I was the, the same thing. Yeah. But it's fun to project out. It's like one day, like I think Tegan's probably going to project out at free safety. He's a little slider guy. Yeah, still hits. He still mm-hmm. definitely whacks. Uh, but it's just, it's just so funny. Like I would just consistently find these guys who are just the best athlete within this area. Yeah, and they just they show it on film. Yeah. He's just the best athlete. And watching his film too, I kept on waiting for that. Like once again, that draft him higher type play. Yeah. But then you throw on his basketball film. Yeah. And the dunks he has, I think he has a, a minute long clip on huddle of him dunking. Yeah. And he has one where he's in transition. He gets the ball for one dribble and one step, and then he two hands it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm sold. Yeah. Like that's the one explosion play I needed to see because you see like the wiggle, you see like the the speed that kind of like put me over the top. It's like, all right, you can actually play. Yeah. And that's like. You keep on getting these athletes like Aiden Hall and Lutmer and Safety, Tegan. Yeah. And it feels like it might get a little crowded. Maybe just move one to offense. Then. Yeah. Like find a spot where we start moving these, you know, NFL type caliber players that are going to protect Ruin the defense. one of their careers. <laughs> Ruin one of their careers. Be selfish. And play them on offense. Yeah. Like we'll just find a, a route for them because it, it feels like we're going to have like a little like density of like yeah. safeties and weak well, side linebackers. Safety actually is very thin right now. Mm-hmm. Entringer's the backup strong safety is a retro freshman and there isn't a we guy really like there isn't yeah. We, yeah but there isn't a guy behind him yeah it's you know it's Schulte Entringer and X going mm-hmm. in the next year like Lutmer's gonna have a chance to be in the two deeps yeah Cash is a similar type scenario Khalil's probably gonna step in maybe have a chance to step in Cash mm-hmm. but all like I was thinking the same thing I was like oh Tegan's gonna kind of be that next man out yeah I like Nestor so much I like uh, Lutmer so much but there's one day where they could just play the strong safety, free safety and cash together Mm -hmm. and we'll have a really strong base. Yeah. It's just fun to project out this team because there's just a ton of speed. Granted, we don't have that like lightning fast corner, but Mm -hmm. that can always be solved in the transfer portal. But if you look at free safety, strong safety, cash, weak side linebacker, that little, that little group of quad of them, Mm -hmm. like Aiden Hall, Lutmer, Nestor, and then Tegan, mm-hmm. that's some real players. All of them have shown some real talent. Yeah. And if they grow up together and then eventually form a, a really uh, good defensive unit, it's going to be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. All right, I think I'm up. I'm going to go with Alex Moda. So his film is 25 minutes long. It's too long. But it's actually 18 minutes long in the last seven minutes of the first seven minutes of the film. <laughs> I realized that when I watched the entire thing. I was like, wait, I think these are re- replay plays. But he's one of those tweeners that I kept on waiting, like trying to project him. Like once it gets kind of like Tegan Davis, like well, where am I going to put you, you know, on the team? And then at the seven minute mark, if you go to his huddle, watch that play. He's playing running back and Marion, you could tell he's the best player on the team by a mile because they just have a myriad of random plays to get him the ball. Yeah. They run like wing T and they like student body ride him. Yeah, and they'll run five wide and they'll jet sweep them. Basically, anything to get them in space, they just try to do that over and over. It didn't matter what the formation was. Yeah, but for that first play, seven minute mark, he gets about six yards downfield, and he puts his right foot in the ground, and gets upfield, like cuts up. He sees a hole and he accelerates, and it looks just like Akron Wadley. Yeah, I know that's a bad name in the Iowa <laughs> fan base right now to say. Yeah, but when Wadley used to hit that gas on that, you know, one cut. And just get up. Field. He's a great one foot cutter. He he's, is. And he's, he's a great. He can. He can. I've saw, I saw that multiple times where he would stick his foot in the ground and get up field quick. Yeah. But again, it's just like you have to be better than just small, be, like good in small spaces as a receiver. Yeah. I honestly, what I took away watching him was like, this looks like Nico Regani. Yes, I, the first player I thought of was yeah. Nico Regani, and super physical too. I think. You watch his defensive highlights. You think this guy's going to be some soft guy. He's, he's not a big dude. Middle linebacker. He's middle linebacker. Yeah. And the first time you watch him, you know, he runs down a play to the sideline. You're like, all right, here comes some hip tackle. Yeah. He just flies to this guy's yeah. knee. He hits him with his head to the knee. I'm like, oh, okay. I did not see that coming. Yeah. I think that's what Iowa is even more interested. They're like, that physicality that you could get with a skill player. Yeah. Like, they, they love that in receivers. They so do. Like, they want to see you hit. And I, it was Vines a, did, had film that hit. Exactly. Again, he had film that hit. But actually, the receiver part, too, because like he is a receiver. He's not a running back. He's too slight. Yeah. He's not defense. He's the same kind of deal. I, but see, I don't. I I think this is a a long play by Kirk and staff defense. So they were competing against Iowa State for him, mm-hmm. and Iowa State. I can't remember if I think Iowa State only viewed him as a DB. Oh. 
and and we sold him. And we said, and they, I remember, and Moto said he was surprised that they were going to offer him at receiver. Uh, and I think it's one of those where they're going to get him on campus. They're going to say, "Hey, man, like you go out in there, you've you've, you've you've ran a couple routes against these high level D one players. You're mm -hmm. not really getting open, are you? Yeah. How about we just go test you out on the hops side? Yeah. Of <laughs> and I think he's going to, I think he, he's going to be the Josh Jackson of this class. Mm -hmm. I think by year two, like spring of his redshirt freshman year, they're going to be like corner. Yeah. Cause he's got, he's got good speed. It's not, but I don't think it's, I think it's going to be just good enough to play corner. Yeah. And he tackles so freaking well. He, I, there's some film on there where he like the guy like starts screaming on the field. Like, after oh, really? I'm, like I'm like, okay, well this is perfect. Yeah. And so I, I don't like the receiver part does like, he does have a moment though. It's like, you actually you have to watch it for a while. It's 14 minutes in <laughs> and they just leave him like they always do. They bring him out to the perimeter and they get a cornerback lined up like five yards off of him. And I, to this point, I'm like, please show me a receiver highlight. Yeah. Like, I gotta see you run a route that makes me believe. Yeah. And if you watch this play, you're instantly convinced because he gets a five yard, you know, sprint, full sprint, fakes a hitch, shows his hips, shows his hand, shows his head, and in one motion, cuts back up and just gasps the corner. Like I've never seen a more guy, a guy more wide open. Really? Beats him by 20 yards. And it was the first time I'm like, there it is. That's a receiver play. Yeah. Like Obviously, it's Marion. We have no idea if they have a QB. I don't remember if the throw was good or not, but yeah. there was not a lot of throwing in the film. Yeah. So maybe it was one of those situations where what's the easiest way to get you the ball? Pitch it to you, run it to you, jet sweep it to you. Yeah. I think he could play receiver. Just it, and it's one play, but the way he makes that move, it just it, it, that's just such an insane thing to say, though, because it's like it's Iowa 3A football. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna make plays in the in the Big Ten at receiver, yeah, you need to see it right away. Yeah, I, I think what, but, what you're saying is, is he, he can play receiver. It was the Iowa. only rep he had at receiver. I saw. I, I know. Right. But, it, but like, even as his running back film would have been like when Caleb Brown got the ball. And, uh, right. Like you were like, oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's just that's just the reality of the receiver room in Iowa. Mm -hmm. And it's probably like we might find a diamond here and then. But I think, again, we've gone back to this. I think it's going to be where guys go to these bigger schools they're like, hey, I really want to play. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I have a chance to the NFL. Yeah. I don't feel like sitting to my junior year to play as a Maybe third, senior as year. a third receiver yeah. or be a second receiver senior. I want to be the guy somewhere. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, yeah, you had that Ohio State offer. I want to go try and be the man there. That's awesome. It's a first rounder place. Yep. Let's go to some place where I actually can play mm -hmm. and I can dominate. Yeah. And I think that's just going to be how we do receiver from now. It, on. it might change how Iowa can perform as a whole. Yeah. By consistently grabbing these skill players that from the top tier programs that just want to play. Yeah. And then when they're told, Hey, you, you know, you're going to catch 30 balls. Like, Oh, I would catch four at Ohio state. I'll yeah. catch 30. Yeah. You know, I'll score more touchdowns, be the starter. I think that's how we'll actually have a chance of building competitive teams going forward. So just a, just a, uh, a quick honorable mention here. I actually liked his junior year film more before he put the weight on. I think he probably played at like 250 his junior year, but mm -hmm. Chase Brackney. Yeah. Uh, he, you could, you, you made the point where it's just like, I think he's just playing as the biggest man in the field and that kind of comes through, but he does just have so many subtle little moves with his hands. Mm -hmm. He's just a developed guy really early. Yeah. So I think he's going to fit it. He could play the one at that. So like he's going to build, like be able to grow into a, a 305, 310 body. Mm -hmm. He's already, I think he's probably like 270 right now. Mm -hmm. He's going to be able to grow into a larger body. Uh, he kind of reminds me of like a fully established Logan Lee. Yeah. Like he had a couple moments where he could, he could really move. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just, you can tell he's just super technical and a technical, like that position, what we're trying to, develop is really technical guys right and he's got a, a big leg up in that yeah area i think it's, it's the first time i watched a junior film of a defensive lineman where it felt like i was watching a uh, redshirt junior at iowa yeah it's like the way he had his hand placement the way he had leverage the way he didn't gamble yeah ever the way he locked out it felt like i was just watching like all right we found an iowa developed high schooler it's now i didn't when i watched a senior film i didn't see like the holy shit Splash place. place and then but at D tackle, you know, if he plays like a one technique or a three technique, we're not going to ask him to do that. Yeah. Can you play your technique over and over and over? Can you never get up field? Can you never lose a double team by a lot? And yeah. I think that's a good pick or an honorable mention just because he could actually accomplish that. Yeah. And it could be early. Yeah. Granted, those the D line right now. That's why I didn't want to take Merriweather. It's like the guys, 
he's four years away from even playing in the two deeps. Yeah. Like there's just so many dudes. Mm -hmm. Like you, even the last class, it's right. Crawford and Allen. Allen. Yeah. Like those guys are going to wait another two and a half years. Yeah. But I think watching both those guys' films, I think Merriweather has that extra gear. That yeah. It's a little different him. than other dudes. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Is that 10? Are we at I, over, I think over so. 10? Yeah. Uh, my honor mention then will be Grant Leeper. I know you disagree. We think the other tight end uh, will be more of a established guy to Iowa, but I don't think either will ever play. You don't think so? No. I like Leeper just because of his profile. I think just like the Cleo Tate background offers, like kind of got you, you know, thinking. I might have read too much in the Leapers film, but he was trying to be a D1 basketball player, came close. And then his senior year, he goes out for football and he runs very crisp routes for being a guy that's, you know, one year into football. And it's it's to prove out that football is not a sport you need to practice. Yeah. It's seriously. Don't, just, don't be a football player your whole right. life. Be a basketball player. Be run track. Be yeah. a wrestler. Play baseball. Like, yeah. If you want to be a football player, don't play football. Yeah. That's yeah. the number one key. Yeah. Um, and just the speed he has out of his breaks, I think. In the I, I did see that. He's a good one foot cutter. Yeah, he, like he's definitely an athlete. He's just got uh, he, he, he. It's going to take a long time, mm -hmm. and it's not like when I watched like Ostranga and Laporta with his two super undervalued recruits. Right, I was like immediately I would see stuff like, oh my gosh, look yeah. at that stride, look at the look at the lateral. His the lateral, lateral is very poor. Yeah, but I think for tight end, I think Lachey didn't have much of a lateral. I think I that's know, where I'm like reading Lachey more into. Lachey was six seven and he's six six. I know. I it just there was something about. How he moved, mm -hmm. it was like I've 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 seen like I saw those guys on the D three football field. Right. Like he didn't move much different than I do, and I was not close to ever playing it down in Iowa. Right. So you, you can like I just saw a lot of athletes like him. Mm -hmm. And granted, we because it's been one year, you know, maybe it'll t teach him to drop his hips better. He yeah. hasn't had to do that within the football field. He you know he's he's basically just test himself out that year. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. really know what he's doing, which makes sense. Like but I just I think there's just other guys that eventually will crop up within mm -hmm. that room that are going to be better. Well, he's got two guys ahead of him already. Yeah. With Australia, and I can't think of the other one that I actually drafted in the offensive draft. Oh, Vanderbush. Vanderbush. Yeah. yeah. It's like those are two guys. Well, then that who's really... the guys that are going to come the year after? Yeah. It's like, and Ortworth is going to be the blocker. Mm -hmm. Like he's not he's not a route runner. He's he's just going to be the mauler. The mauler. Yeah. And so then you're trying to fit into this. I'm be the quasi athletic guy, but I'm not that athletic yeah so it i just i didn't really see it yeah but again he's a one-year player and it's difficult to rule a guy out when he's 18 years old mm -hmm. he's coming on to a team so we'll see yep okay yeah so that's a draft um i think now it's uh we'll actually be able to look back at this video in about you know three or four years from now some of these guys will actually be drafted and we'll be making fun of each other like hey remember when you said this guy wasn't good or I was totally right about him. Um, that's we, we, We've had these conversations, as we mentioned before, for a decade now. And then we forget who we called out. Right. Like occasionally I'll remember like, hey, remember when you bet me a hundred bucks that this guy was going to be shit? Well, mm -hmm. he's now really good, like yeah. I said. But now we have a record of it. Yeah. And that's going to be fun going forward and definitely possibly future videos. Like, hey, our worst takes are best takes. So yeah, yeah. Um, if you disagreed or agreed with any ranking we had, uh, comment it in the YouTube section. Um, even if you want to rank uh, your own recruits as well, we'd really appreciate that. Um, but thank you for your time today and, you know, looking forward to having you guys along for more episodes and yeah, make sure to subscribe and like the channel. Uh, we're going to keep doing this regardless whether you guys do that or not. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you.